I'm going to break down all the animation techniques and different effects I've used to create this cool alien character animation. Now this illustration is from Motion Array, but a bit more on that later. So I first started out by splitting my layers in Illustrator, so I had full control over everything I wanted to. I even separate this down to all my goo layers and the eye pupil highlights, all that kind of thing, just in case I wanted more control a bit later on. It meant I didn't have to come back to Illustrator. I then imported everything into After Effects and began setting up my controllers for my different layers. So I have my master controller for everything with the alien ship, but then I also have a goo controller for everything that is this kind of gooey pink layer. And then I've also got an eye controller, which controls everything there. I then started by trying to get some kind of basic animation, ignoring the goo for the moment as I knew this would need quite a lot of work. But I did go into animating my eye and begin to try to get some kind of loop on this. Now, because I split everything out individually, I also converted my eyelids to shape layers as well. So if I open up these keyframes in here and open up all of those, you can kind of see I've only animated the pupil the eyelids and the master eye control. Now you'll notice everything moves in arcs and that replicates a kind of a actual reality of how things move in the real world. Now when it comes to eyes, the pupil kind of moves as we blink and that's a huge thing that I think people get wrong when animating eyes. If you tend to look at something else around where you're sitting now, you'll notice you kind of blink towards it or as you turn your head you blink while your eye moves it's a really weird concept because if you really try to focus on it your eye will actually just dart around but it's not actually how we look at things we tend to blink as we change our eye position so that's something i've tried to replicate in here as well of course i've then used my eye controller just to give some extra movement as though the head is turning around and it just helps to add a little more dimension to the project. So when it came to animating the goo, there's actually quite a few different techniques that go into here. And I did actually pre-comp this to make it a little easier to work with. And I've also used my pre-comp with a mat that's matted just to the underside of this kind of UFO ship here. So I can fully control where it's visible because without that mat, it's kind of just peeking over the top. And I didn't really want that. Now in this pre-comp, there's a lot of different layers going on, but it's pretty simple if I actually break it down. So I first just have a pink solid layer that's matted to my original gooey shape to give me the basic outline. I've then gone ahead and knowing I need to have some kind of drips coming off this, and there's a cool technique that I've used that I've referenced in other videos before. Now this whole goo system does actually loop, and the way I've done that is kind of why we see so many layers in this pre-comp. So I first again used a pink solid and I've created seven masks on this layer and they all just animate down and streak down and I've eased it so that they come to the bottom and then just kind of drop down and we get that kind of dripping effect as it sort of builds up and then goes all the way down and drips off. I then added a fast box blur to this layer and you'll see why in just a moment. I've then duplicated these balls and just offset them in time and then just trim the layer on each side. So this helps not only add more of them, but keeps a constant loop running of these gooey things that I can then time remap in the pre-comp above. Now to get it looking as though these blurry shapes are actually dripping off this goo, it's kind of like a meta ball technique that I've used. And I have this adjustment layer here. And if I turn this on, I have a simple choker and this crushes the outline of my shape and brings it inwards. So the more I increase that, the uh, more it'll kind of begin to crush the outline, so to speak. Jake Bartlett has done a fantastic video on this, so I highly recommend that if you're not too sure on what the choker can actually do, as he'll probably explain it in a much better way than I do. By doing this, I'm actually crushing off the blur that I've added on to these original shapes. So if I just solo this goo balls layer, and then add this adjustment layer on top, you'll notice I'm crushing it past the blur values. And you can see when I put it up to my original value, it crushes it a lot and it's taken out that blurry edge. By doing this, it then crushes the outside to kind of make it look like things are dripping or things are connected. And it's a really cool way you can do things like meta balls. I've then re-added on my outlines here. And these are just the black stroke outlines from the original artwork. And again, I've done the same thing where I've animated one and then 
using a bit of maths, just offset these and made them loop. And I've done this for all of the above. So if I just turn all of them on, it's my original artwork uh, just dripping down on top. Now you'll see we also have this extra goo that comes in uh, and that's exactly why I ended up matting it um, on the pre-comp above. This was missing the rest of the stroke around the outline and the best way to add this was just to go back to my pre-comp here and add a layer styles with a stroke effect that's the exact same as my original stroke. I've then also time remapped this so I can have it loop out because I looped it inside the pre-comp. As I mentioned earlier, the main character for this animation came from Motion Array. Motion Array is a marketplace packed with all the creative assets you could ever need. And as part of their mission to give you the best assets possible, they've teamed up with renowned animator Matt Voice. For those of you who might not know, Matt is a UK based animator who creates awesome illustrative kinetic typography. He's worked with huge brands like Adobe, Disney Plus, Nike, and Pepsi. Now with his new and exclusive collaboration with Motion Array, you're able to dive into his work and his template. I'm personally a big fan of Matt's work and have been for quite some time. So being able to dive into one of his projects through Motion Array is pretty amazing. With Matt's exclusive template, you'll have access to one intro with seven fully modular scenes. 10 custom titles, 6 transitions, and 9 overlay elements, all of which are completely editable to perfectly match your style. Plus, if you're comfortable with After Effects, you can actually dive into Matt's project file and see how he brings his animations to life. It's like a masterclass in keyframes, expressions, and effects. This is the first time Matt has offered any of his assets in such a customizable way, and it's exclusively designed for Motion Array. So if you're looking to add some Matt voice magic and tons of other creative assets to your projects, check out Motion Array using the link in the description below. And a massive thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. I've then gone ahead and added some positional movement to this UFO ship just to make things a bit more interesting, and that's done using expressions on my ship controller. I've separated the dimensions and my X position works on a sine expression, and essentially it's just running along a sine wave from left to right. If I take the expression off my Y position there, you'll see it just moves left to right. I've then added the classic wiggle expression to my Y position just to add a bit more interest. I did also add a sine wave expression to my rotation as well, just to give it again a bit more interest and kind of like it's rocking side to side. If I take that off, you can really see the difference. Although it's quite a subtle effect, it really does impact the overall look. I felt the goo was looking a bit too one dimensional, so I added a second goo comp in there with a lot of noise to make it kind of look more like a running liquid. And again, that's matted to my original ship. Inside this one, I've just added an adjustment layer over the top with a turbulent noise that's cranked quite high. And then I've set this to stencil luma so that my layers only follow the white values or the black values of that noise depending on my settings. So I can invert that very easily. In my comp above, I've then set the blending mode to overlay so it's not too overpowering. To the pre-comp, I also added a few more effects to make it a bit more interesting. Of course, starting with a fill to just add that brighter texture so it's actually visible. And then I've also added a CC bend it effect, and this enables the goo to wave from side to side. Now this has an expression on it, and what it's doing is it's just related to my rotation. So it's doing the inverse of what my rotation is doing, but at an amplitude of four times more. So in this instance, when my value gets up to around 16, my rotation will actually be four on my ship controller as you can see. I then added a rough and edges to this just to make it a bit more interesting and break the pattern a bit more and then a turbulent displace as well for the exact same reason and then that leaves us with this cool runny noise look. It was then time to add a scene to this to make it a bit more interesting so I started with a black solid and added CC starburst and then just filled this to white to kind of get some stars in the background. I then created a planet layer, which is just a circle, and added a turbulent noise to this to break it up and give it some texture, more like a planet. I then added a colorama effect to this, uh, modifying my output cycle with a preset that was just all a bunch of different blues to kind of 
bring back into the original color palette. I then added a dupe of this layer and just blurred that on the background just to add some kind of light emission or ozone layer to the planet. And then I thought, why not actually add a planet for, for this alien to be on? So I started by creating this hill layer and added a four color gradient to this and a CC lens effect to give it that bend. I then created a horizon light layer as well, just by duplicating the hill and slightly changing the shape, making it a brighter color and then just creating a huge fast box blur on this to kind of have some light coming behind this hill as well. And then I added in some rocks with a simple shape and a wave warp and then a mirror on top of that. It was missing something so I did end up creating a trees layer in Illustrator and then brought this into After Effects. Now this was actually using the AI generator in Illustrator which is why it isn't perfect but it kind of adds to the effect of the scene. Again, this is just one layer on the side and then it's got a mirror on to kind of replicate that and gives a bit of symmetry, keeping focus on the alien in the middle. I felt it needed a little more going on, so I duped the trees and added a fast box blur and a fill again just to kind of give it that lighting. I wasn't completely sold on this, however, uh, but I'll touch on that in just a moment. I then added a grain layer to this using the Kodak 800T preset just to add a bit more texture to this. I then also added a second adjustment layer with a posterized time on set to 12.5 frames per second, just as a little extra effect to slow it all down. But I still wasn't feeling content with it. The main task next was just trying to add more depth and layering to this. So you'll notice my trees have actually duplicated now and they're also slightly blurred. So my tree layer here just has a fast box blur added to the pre-comp. And then in the layer styles, I actually added a bevel and emboss just to kind of create that light hitting the tree effect. I then duplicated this up and just changed the scale of this and reversed it as well, just to add a bit more variance in the trees. And then I've also just slightly changed the fast box blur radius on that one. So it's not as strong in the distance there. As though the depth is kind of evening itself out as we begin to look at the main character. I also added a second rocks layer in here and rather than changing the shape, I actually just adjusted my wave warp height and width instead and move the position around just to give it a bit more variance. The main thing you might have noticed is I've also created this gooey floor. Again, this is a pre-comp and using the original pink base and then I've just created a mask layer on top as I was going to do some kind of droopy things but I couldn't really get that to work as well as I wanted so instead I actually pre-comped that and just added a turbulent displace to give it a bit of motion. Again I've used the uh, noise trick with a mat on top set to overlay again just to add some variance and make it look a bit more liquidy and then once more added the stroke layer style on top to match the rest of the artwork. I did also add a glow layer using deep glow just to kind of crush everything up a bit more. And if I turn that off, you'll kind of notice the difference. And it just kind of crushes these highlights and kind of adds to the effect of the whole composition. After all that, I still felt like something was missing from the scene. So I began to add some subtle parallax and a camera zoom instead. So I just offset all my layers in Z depth uh, just slightly by 500 each layer just to create an easy parallax effect. I did a camera with a camera controller and then I just animated the Z position of that camera controller. You'll also notice I have this cam blur layer as well which is just an adjustment layer with some slight variation in blurring just kind of like it's shifting focus to this UFO type object. And then I also added a wiggle to my camera position just to give it that kind of hand shake camera look. If you want to learn more techniques and see how I make some other animations, you can go ahead and watch this video next.